with the League of Women Voters of New Ulm, and I've got with me tonight uh, Greg Bartz from the Brown County Republican Party. He's the party chair, and also Lori Selner, uh, Brown County DFL or Democratic Party chair. Um, and tonight we're going to, uh, for the New Ulm Forum, we're going to talk about precinct caucuses. So uh, my first question for you both is, for those who don't know or who have never attended caucus, what is a precinct caucus? Go ahead. Well, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a gathering of neighbors that uh, want to get together and discuss issues. Um, they can bring resolutions forward and vote on those from their precinct. And uh, they also elect delegates and alternates to the uh, county convention and also the endorsing conventions for the state senate and for the state house. Okay. So it sounds like this is some behind the scenes party business that happens at caucuses. Um, and the resolutions you talk about that would be for the party platform, is that right? That's right. correct. Okay. It is really, you know, it is that first step in what seems like a, um, a process that's sort of foreign to a lot of people in terms of the party stuff. But mm -hmm. at the precinct caucus, I think that's the most friendly level to really get involved. It's much, um, much more laid back than than later meetings that you can attend. Um, but even, even those are you know, pretty straightforward. And it's your way to really influence uh, what the party platform looks like uh, when we have our state conventions towards the spring and who we endorse to be our candidates on the ballot for November. Okay, and so um, do the caucuses typically take place only in presidential election years or are they in midterm elections as well? Both, they're even number years. Okay. Whenever there's gonna be an election, even number years, then there's a uh, caucus. Okay. So it seems like we live in a never-ending election cycle these days, but would you say the caucuses sort of kick off the upcoming election cycle? That's correct. If you, if you go to your caucus, you have the chance to, maybe a few weeks later, be a delegate to one of our county mm -hmm. conventions here in, in Brown County and then go on further beyond that if you'd okay. like. And it seems like everybody has has ideas on what uh, yeah. the political landscape is and this is a chance to um, talk to your neighbors about them and mm -hmm. and if you put them in the form of a resolution and you get uh, your precinct, the majority of your precinct to vote for that, then, uh, then that does go on to the county and at least in the Republicans, yes. uh, the ones that pass the county convention go on to the Congressional District Convention, mm -hmm. and those that pass there go on to the state convention, and those that pass there become part of our policy or platform. Okay. And the only those difference the is for the Democrats, if you pass it at the county convention, it gets forwarded to the state convention. It, it skips okay. the congressional okay. level. And so the, the political parties run their own caucus, is yes. that correct? And so they the way you run your caucus for the Republican Party may vary a little bit from the way the Democrats run their caucus. Sure, number so of delegates that we're mm -hmm. electing. Um, I think a lot of the rules are pretty close to the same. Um, and like the, I said, they're pretty informal. And the caucuses are set up by state statute, state law. Yeah. Okay. So uh, through s state law, just uh, tells us which day they're gonna be, the time yes. that they come to order. Um, when we have to start voting and how long, mm -hmm. you know, the minimum time we have to uh, be in session and stuff. So a lot of things are set up by the state by law. The state and then there's some local. And then the parties correct. implement the state okay. law. Correct. And so the Democrat and the Republicans are the two major parties um, in the nation. Um, locally, we don't have any other active political parties in our area that I'm aware of. No, not, not, a, not that I am either. It depends on um, how well they did in the last election. Okay. And even when other parties have had precinct caucuses, um, they might have been more regional than by county. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've seen, I think the Independence Party yeah, Independence has in the I past. I'm not, I'm not sure if they did locally. Parties but I, out there. I would add to the state law, and um, there's also state law that says your employer has to let you um, take time, unpaid time off mm -hmm. from work to participate in the caucus if you want to and if you give them written notice um, 10 days ahead of time. Okay. 
Yeah, and all of, all of that information um, can be found on the Minnesota S Secretary of State uh, website as far as um, those sorts of, yes. of protections for voters that want to attend. So um, who can participate in a, a local caucus? Okay, well that's, that's where we have, I think, one difference. Okay. Um, back in about 2000, the Democratic Party in Minnesota, the DFL party, decided that we would um, let people who are gonna be 16 by election day of, in this case, November 3rd, 2020, they could participate in things like our resolution process, but they cannot participate in becoming a delegate to the next level or electing the delegates um, for that, you have to be 18 by election day, so you have to be eligible to vote, which I, okay. I think is the case and, and with And for ours, anyone can come. Uh, you can be observers. Yes. We encourage uh, students to come, and, and a lot of the teachers encourage their students to come, sometimes yeah. give them extra credit. But to vote at the precinct caucus, so you have observers, and then those that participate by voting, and uh, you have to be, for the Republicans, you have to be 18 by election day. Okay. And, and be able to vote, so right. okay. citizen and, then, and all that. Generally, too, you do want those attending your caucus to generally agree with the principles yes. of mm -hmm. either yes. party, whichever caucus they're attending, is that correct? And that's, I think, part of the state statute, too, that yeah. you have to agree with the principles of, of the party you're caucus. And in our with. state, we don't register. We don't register correct. with a party, right. but... There's no, like card-carrying Democrats or Republicans. So if you sign in a, at a DFL precinct caucus, you're saying, I live in that precinct that I'm signing in at, and I'm a, a DFLer or a Republican, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be old enough to vote if I'm fully participating. Okay. So my next question is, when and where will the 2020 precinct caucuses be held? And I don't know in Brown County if there are several um, caucuses, but maybe we'll yeah. focus on New Ulm for the purposes of this question. Okay. Well, in New Ulm, um, they're the same night, February 25th uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, you can come early to register at like 6.30. And for New Ulm, for the eight precincts in New Ulm, plus um, Cottonwood, Siegel, and Milford Township, um, we're going to be at the community center in New Ulm. On, okay. Uh, and some people may know that as the senior yes, center. Yes. Now the community on German center. Street. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans uh, will be holding theirs at the New Ulm Event Center. And uh, in addition to all the precincts in uh, New Ulm, uh, the city of Hanska, the uh, townships of Cottonwood, Lake Hanska, Linden, Milford, Siegel uh, will also uh, caucus there. Okay, and for those, yeah. again, not familiar with the New Ulm Event Center, that would be on the south end of town, um, sort of behind High B. On, on yes. 20th Area. Street, 301 yeah. 20th Street. Okay. And I should point out that, you know, when the cities do have precincts, uh, but when you're in the rural areas, um, the precincts are the townships. Yes. Okay. And so when we say uh, precinct caucuses, the townships are the precincts in the rural areas. Okay. Um, so for someone <laughs> who's never attended caucus before, but would like to, what are some things they can expect when they get there, I mean, generally? For us, and I'm sure for you too, you, they can expect someone to greet them and help them um, figure out where they're gonna be seated in terms of, um, we seat the precincts at separate tables in, in a large room. Um, so someone will help them figure out by their address which precinct table to go to. And then, um, you know, we'll start the evening at 7 p.m. We'll have um, someone leading the whole group and, um, you know, going through the pledge and other things that you do at meetings and a greeting. Um, they might hear from a local candidate and uh, they'll elect someone within their precinct to sort of run their little precinct meeting at their table and they'll proceed to, to talk about things like resolutions and accept, um, electing local precinct party officers. And if there's, as you said, Lori, if there's local candidates, they can come and speak at yeah. the precinct caucuses. If there's uh, congressional or statewide candidates, a lot of times they'll send a letter, and so then we'll read the letter. Mm -hmm. If they have any uh, um, campaign information, we'll have that available too. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, sp chance for people to get to know the candidates, who the candidates are gonna be. Um, 
And of course, this is before the candidates are chosen, so there can be uh, several candidates for one spot. Mm -hmm. And so get your decision making yeah. uh, started yeah. on who you support. Okay. And usually light refreshments are provided, I believe. Yes. And so if nothing else to entice you out, you know, there's goodies. <laughs> yeah, we usually don't have, have too many goodies, but um, <laughs> people just mainly want to talk and okay. visit. And but you do sort of sit with your neighbors. Yes. Um, you are split up by where you live, so it is sort of the people in your same area of town Correct. Um, that you sit with. So it is, it is a very um, local... Friendly social gathering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we start out in each location um, in a larger group. Know, for these letters or for yes. candidates yes. to speak and then we'll split into the the precincts mm -hmm. and you can only vote in the precinct you live in so okay. that's important yes okay. um, so uh, in 2020 uh, new this year we we will have a presidential primary so um, because of that change I guess people are wondering, should they still attend their party caucus? What are your thoughts on, on that? Well, absolutely. As we talked about, a lot of people are really interested in the issues that are going to be on our platforms. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big draw for anyone. And if they really want to get involved uh, in determining, you know, say, if, if they're interested in helping one of their presidentials, they can go down the line to the other conventions and help someone become a delegate to our national convention um, to you know, get them to support that particular candidate. We don't discuss uh, the presidential candidates at this year's um, because it's happening before our primary, which, so we cannot, um, at least in our party because of uh, DNC rules, we can't, uh, we can't like sub-caucus for one presidential candidate or another before our own primary takes place. Okay. But people should come and get involved. This is the start of the process. Okay. Um, and there's more than one race mm -hmm. in this election. There's more than the presidential okay. race. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have uh, U.S. Senate, our congressional races, our uh, state house and state senate races. So um, this is the beginning. And as I said, you know, it goes up uh, county level and, and congressional district and state level. So uh, it's very important. and. In this whole process, uh, you know, we pick our candidates. This is how we choose who's going to represent each party. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you want to have a voice in who's going to represent your party, mm -hmm. you want to come and, and participate. Mm -hmm. And it seems like right now with the political climate we're in, people are more engaged maybe than they have been in the past. And so, you know, getting this information out, it's a good way that if you've never attended caucus, okay, now you maybe know a little bit about it. Um, you know, maybe you'll think about coming out um, to participate this year and see what it's all about. So um, just want to remind you again, the date for the precinct caucuses in 2020 will be Tuesday, February 25th. Um, they begin at 7 o'clock p.m., so you may want to um, try to arrive maybe around 6.30 to get signed in and, and find where you're I'm going to be um, sitting, um, so you're ready to go when it starts at 7. Um, and then I just, um, again, with the League of Women Voters, we're very interested in um, encouraging people to vote, registering people to vote, and that sort of thing. So I do want to remind you also, even if you do attend your precinct caucus in February, to also um, show up and vote in the presidential primary, which will be Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020. And early voting for that begins Friday, January 17th, and ends Monday, March 2nd. So um, two things coming up here in the near future, caucuses in February and the presidential primary in March. Um, so I just want to thank you both for taking time to talk with us tonight and get that information out to our local voting public. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the opportunity.